Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you guys how to use ML Agents in your Unity projects. So the first thing you're going to need to do is make a new Unity project. The reason why you're going to make, want to make a new one instead of using an existing one is because ML Agents is a little hard to learn and it'll be easier to follow along if you use the exact same things as me. So I have created a 2D project, so I recommend you guys make a 2D project. And once that has opened up, uh, you're going to need to open up the Package Manager. So click Windows and then Package Manager. And it'll open up and then you need to click right here where it says packages and then in project you need to change it to unity registry right here then in the search bar search for ml and you'll see the ml agents package if you guys have a different major or minor patch i'm most likely going to be making a new video on how to use that Once you guys have got here, install. Now that the ML Agents package is installed, we're going to need to install Python. So to do that, you guys can open up your web browser or go into the description and I'll have a link to the correct version of Python. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just search on search for Python here and click the downloads button, downloads, windows, and I'm gonna look for, it's gonna be 3.9.13 is the correct version for this. Now, the reason why we gotta do this, this specific version is because I find it works, the ML Agents works with this, but not with any other version that I've tested. So I'd recommend following along with this exact version of Python. So once you get to the Python download page, you need to make sure you click the Windows Installer 64 bit, not the 32 bit, the 64 bit. Make sure you click this, because if you get the 32 bit, it will not work. So make sure you get the 64 bit version. So I'm going to go ahead and download this and install it to my downloads folder. I'm going to open up File Explorer and go to Downloads. Now, now you see I have Python 3.9.13, but I also have this Python 3.11.3. Now, to run the 3.9.13, you're going to need to install uninstall any other version of Python you have. And I have 3.11.3, so I'm going to need to uninstall it. To uninstall it, you just need to have the installer, double-click the installer, and then it will pop up this menu right here, and you're going to need to click Uninstall. Okay guys, now that it's finished uninstalling, we're going to need to uninstall the correct version of Python. I'm going to go ahead and delete this because I don't need it anymore. And double click this version of Python here to install it. Now, make sure whenever you install it, make sure you, have, make sure you click Add Python 3.9 to Path. Otherwise, it will not recognize that you have Python installed. Okay guys, now that it has finished installing, I'm going to go ahead and click Close. Now I'm going to have to go find where I put my Unity project. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new tab in File Explorer. If you have Windows 10, you guys probably don't have this. So you guys can either reuse this one right here or open up a new File Explorer. And now I'm going to go ahead and find my project. For me, it's under my C drive, Game Development, Unity, and then right here, ML Agents. And now what I'm going to need to do is click this thing right here, up here, and write CMD. Now, it's important that you click all of this, this whole thing. Now that my command prompt is open, I need to make sure I have Python installed and it recognizes it. So I'm gonna write Python right here and you see I now have Python installed and you can see the version right here, Python 3.9.13. If this is not the, if it's not 3.9.13, you're going to need to uninstall your version of Python, the version that says right here, by getting the installer for it and then, un then running the installer and click uninstall and then install the correct version of Python, which is 3.9.13. Anyways, now I'm going to press, now I'm not going to press, I'm going to type exit to exit out Python. Now, I've been told sometimes Python will not work, so PY might work for you, but it doesn't work for me, so I'm just going to stick with Python. So the first thing that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to create a virtual environment for the training. So to do that, you need to write Python dash M V E N V V E N V. So Python-M is Python module, the VENV is the module, the, the, name, the name of the module, and you need to tell it, and it, it will create a couple folders for you, and you're going to need to tell it what you want the folder name to be. So the Python-M for Python module, the module is going to be the VENV module, and, you're, and it's going to be in a folder 
named VENV. Now I'm going to press enter and this is going to take a little bit for it to make all the files so I'll be back whenever it's over. Okay now that's done you can verify that it created all the folders by opening up file explorer and going to your package, not your package, your project and now you see the VENV folder. Inside of it it's going to have a scripts folder and then inside of that there's going to be activate file. We're going to need to activate the activate file in the command prompt. So to do that you need to write the folder name which is VENV slash scripts slash activate just like this now I'm going to press enter and I messed up the spelling of something so I'm going to go ahead and write it again now that I have my virtual environment activated all I need to do now is I need to install some Python stuff so the first thing I need to install is called pip so to install it, I need to write Python dash m pip install dash dash upgrade pip it's going to use the python module and it's going to install the pip package and pip is a python package manager and it's going to upgrade it so it's on the newest version so i'm going to go and click enter here so now what we need to do is we need to install the ml agents package to do that you need to write pip install ml agents okay now that it's over we need to install. We need to install something called PyTorch. To install it, you need to write pip three install torch vision torch audio. Oh, actually, not just like this. You need to write install torch torch vision torch audio, just like this. Okay, so you guys may be wondering what is this PyTorch thing that we're installing? Well. PyTorch is an open source deep learning framework that we're going to be using for the ML agents. Now we need to install one more thing. It has already been installed though, so what we actually need to do is upgrade it. So what I'm going to write here is pip install protobuf equals 3.20.3. .3. So protobuf stands for protocol buffers, plural. No clue what it does. But it's some package that ML Agents uses, so we have to get the correct version of it. Because ML Agents, by default, um, installs the incorrect, installs an incorrect version of it. No clue why. So after recording, I realized I forgot to show you guys how to make sure you guys have the ML Agents package properly installed. Go into Command Prompt and write ML Agents dash learn dash dash help, or you can write dash h. And that will work just as well. Now this will take a little bit and then it will give you all these commands. So if you guys had any errors in that part, you guys can let me know in the comments and I'll figure out how to fix the error. Now we actually get to start working in Unity with our ML Agents package. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write, create a new empty game object and I'm going to call it environment, env. You may be wondering why is he creating an environment? What is this going to be used for? It's going to be used for faster training of the AI. Because it, it would be really slow if I had one AI going and getting the goal over and over and over again. Never I could have multiple instances of it, multiple environments as it's called, with the AI trying to get the goal. So it's just faster this way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 2D sprite and I'm going to make a new square and I'm going to call this background. And it's going to be 10 by 10. And I'm going to change the color to an orange color. Yeah, that, look, that looks good. So now I'm going to create another empty game object and I'm going to call this agent. I'm going to create a 2D sprite as a child of it, a 2D square. I'm going to call this visual. And then I'm going to change the color of the visual to be a green color. Actually, let's go with blue. So now we have the agent. We need a goal for the agent to go to, so I'm going to create a new empty game object. I'm going to call this target. And I'm going to create an empty, no, I'm going to create a 2D sprite circle, and it's going to be called the visual. And I'm going to make the color of this one be a light blue color. Now this doesn't really necessarily matter, the color of them don't really matter because the agent won't be seeing the color. But what they will be seeing, it, they actually won't be seeing anything. 
they're just going to they're going to be told the position of things instead of actually seeing it with themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them on opposite ends of the map so that the agent will also go to it. Now I'm going to create one more empty game object. I'm gonna call this wall. And inside of it, walls actually plural, because it's gonna be more more than one walls. Wall. So I'm gonna make a child of the environment. Reset its transform. And I'm gonna start creating the walls. Now the walls, I'm gonna make them invisible. Since we know where they're at, they're at the edge of the um background. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create an empty actually and call this top. Move it up to the top. And now add a box collider 2D to it and scale it up on the X 10 units. Now I'm going to duplicate it and name it duplicate it and name it bottom. And move it over to the bottom. Then I'm going to duplicate it again, name it left. Move it over to the left side. And for those that are wondering how I make how I'm moving it in by increments, like snapping to the grid, if you hold control while moving something, it will snap it to the grid. That's what I'm using right now to move it perfectly in line. I'm going to duplicate one more time and call it right. And move it over to the right side. Okay, now that I got my environment set up with all my balls here, I'm going to go ahead and make all these triggers. I'm actually going to add a box collider to the agent also. And I'm going to mark it as a trigger and a rigid body. And just a rigid body 2D. Just so that it'll have gravity. That's all I want it for. I'm going to apply all the constraints, so it's going to be freeze position on X, Y. Now, last of all, actually, I got to make sure you have this trigger. Now, I'm going to make a, I'm going to add a circle collider to my um, target. And I'm going to mark it as trigger also. But anyways, now that we got the scene setup done with our whole environment here, we can now see that agent go once we add the script for it once we create the script my bad so i'm gonna go ahead and create a new c sharp script folder no i'm gonna create a new folder call it scripts and inside that i'm gonna create a new c sharp script i'm gonna call this move to target agent i'm gonna go ahead and open this up in visual studios if you guys have Visual Studios code, that's just fine. I'm I prefer to use Visual Studios. Or if you guys have any other IDE, it'll work the same. But first of all, I'm going to add a new using tag. It's going to be called Unity. Dot. ML agents. And then I'm going to get rid of the start and update functions because you can't even use them with this. I'm going to replace the mono behavior here with agent. And now I can start coding our agent but first i'm going to go into the back into unity and add the agent component to our agent guy our agent game object and you see it attaches two components the behavior params and the move to target agent script that we just created so this behavior params is automatically put on whenever you put the move to target agent script on and it's going to have a bunch of things that you need to use for the ml agent like first thing behavior name we're going to change this to move to target we're going to need to change the observation size in a little bit and we're going to need to change the actions in a little bit and then this is stuff we won't need to touch i don't think maybe we can touch the behavior yeah we're going to, need to touch the behavior type so now that we got this attached i'm going to make a new function inside my script it's going to be a public override and it's going to be on action received what this will do is whenever it receives and whenever the ml agent decides to take an action it's going to, this function is going to be called, and then we, I'm going to do code to, in this case, move the agent. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new float. I'm going to call this move x. And it's going to equal actions dot continuous actions at index 0. But we haven't set any of our actions up, so we can go ahead and do that now. So first thing that I'm going to be talking about is the continuous actions here. I personally like to use these because I don't understand the discrete branches very much. So that's what I like to use. I like to use continuous actions. I'm going to go ahead and say it can make two continuous actions and zero discrete branches. If you guys want to figure out more about what these do, I recommend going to the Unity Learn website. 
So if I go to Unity Learn right here, Learn, I can go ahead and click here. Then I'm going to go ahead and scroll down all the way to the bottom. Then I'm going to click Courses and then wait for it to load. And you can see all these courses. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to search for ML or ML Agents, I guess. And then you can see this ML Agents Hummingbird course. It's a little outdated but it still teaches you a lot of things about ML agents and how it works. So I recommend taking this thing right here. It's a really awesome tutorial. But anyways, back to this. I'm going to choose two continuous actions. Then I'm going to here, I'm going to duplicate this right here since I now have the continuous action at index 0. I'm going to have to change this to move Y. And I'm going to change the continuous action to 1. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a float for the movement speed movement speed and it's going to equal 5 in my case because that's why I prefer and now I'm going to change the transform dot position plus equals a new vector to move x on the x position then move y on the y Oh, it won't work because it wants it as a vector 3. There we go. Anyways, now I'm going to times it by time. Dot delta time. So it doesn't go really fast. And then I'm going to times it by the movement speed. That's it. Okay. Now that we have this whole thing, you may see one problem with it. If you've done ML agents before. And that one problem is we're using transform position. Now, the reason why that's a problem is because the AI here if we have multiple environments, it's easier if we use the local position because we see this guy right here. We have this guy right here. Let's say the this agent right here goes and gets the goal. Yay. It learned. I need to move to the goal at this position, this position right here, and I get the reward. So then this agent would be like, oh, if I need to move to this position up here, all I need to do is go up here go like that. But it's going to hit this wall right here, and so it will die whatever so in this case we need to use local position so it knows okay I need to go just to the right I need to go to the right and get to my target instead of this target up here so that's the way I like to look at it and that's the reason why you got to use local position instead of global position now I need to add a public override void on no not on it's just click observations and now this now this I'm going to tell it what it can see basically now it's not actually going to be seeing things it's just going to I'm going to give it values on stuff and it's going to learn what those values do because we can't actually tell what the values do so we're going to see the observation size we're going to give it it the agent's position and we're going to give it the target's position that's right target's position and so we'll need two um our we'll need two on our observations right well no actually we don't want to because we're going to be sending it our it we're going to be sending it its x position no its x position right here like this one and its y position so that would be two just for it and then we have to send it two more for this one's x position and this one's y position so I'm going to put it at 4, because we're going to give it 4 observations and all. Now I'm going to go back into code, and I'm going to write sensor dot add observations a new, actually not only write new, I just need to open parenthesis vector2, close parenthesis transform dot position. I'm going to duplicate that, and I need to change it to the target position. But it doesn't have a reference to the target position. So I'm going to go ahead and add a serialized field, private, transform, target. Target. Now, for those that don't know what the serialized field thing does, it, is, it shows it up in the, it shows the variable in the inspector. Now you guys may know that the public, if I put public instead of private, it does the same exact thing. But if I have it as public, 
I could create a new script and then I could accidentally change this target to something else. So that's why it's better to keep these private and put serialized field so that no other script can change it. But now that I got this, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop the target on here and open my script back up. Now I'm going to change the transform position to target dot position. And now we gave it the observations. And now what we need to do is we need to give it a reward whenever it it gets the goal and we need to discipline it whenever it hits the walls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now that we have we have all of our um collision set up already. So I need now I need to write on trigger enter because we marked them as trigger on trigger enter 2D actually. And then I could write if collider. I can write if collider dot name equals target then decode and then else if collider collision not collider collision dot name equals wall walls then do something else but the problem with this code right here is and but why is it else if this needs to be else if so else if walls then do some other code but the problem is walls is not actually the name of these wall objects right here so that wouldn't actually make sense so we could technically make a new tag a new layer but I don't think that that's a good idea here what I like to do instead is I like to create a new script create a new folder subfolder and call it tags then I could create a new script inside of that and name it target. Oh, let's spell it incorrectly. Target, I like to open up, get rid of the start and update functions. Save it, go back into Unity, then create another script and call this wall. Open it up, get rid of the start and update functions. And go back into Unity. And then I like to attach my wall scripts to my walls and my target script to my target and then now back in my move to target agent script instead of looking for the name I can write try get component out target target and then we have the target now then I can go try get component again out and then I can name it wall, and then wall. Now the reason why I prefer to do this is because it doesn't have to do anything with strings. Because I could also just very easily go here and be like, yep, I could have accidentally called it target here. Or my string value, I could have named it with a lowercase t, and it would have messed up my whole code. So that's the reason why I prefer to use target component instead of just getting the component. No, instead of just checking the name. Anyways, now I'm just going to write add reward. I never hit a goal. And I'm going to give it 10 on the reward. And then I'm going to end the episode. So the training consists of multiple episodes. In each episode, he's going to either fail or succeed. Here, he succeeded and got the reward. But if he hits here, then he's going to fail and get a negative 2 reward. And he's going to learn, okay, if I hit a wall, that's bad. I need to move to the target. And that's good. Right? No, and now I need to add a on episode begin function. And this is basically kind of like a start function. Just like that. But it's different because it's for every episode. You don't technic you don't reload the scene every episode. So that's the reason why I use on episode begin for this. So on episode begin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write transform dot position equals a new vector three, and for now I'm just going to leave it at zero and zero. No, not O and O. Object and O. Want zero and zero. I'm going to duplicate this and also give the target transform the same thing. 
But what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to make it random for the agent so the agent doesn't learn to do the same thing every single time. So I can move it. I'm going to make it random for between negative 3.5 and 3.5. I mean 1.5. So negative 1.5. It's negative 3.5F. And negative 1.5F. But actually, no, that's not what I need to do. I need to write random dot range between negative. There we go. Then we also need to do one on the Y. So I'm, I'm going to just copy this code here. And I'm going to go figure out what I need the random to, what I need the range to be between negative, between positive 3. 0.5, no, this would be negative because it starts with minimum to positive 3.5. Now, actually, I'm just going to get rid of this code right here and duplicate it. Then I'm going to change these two right here around because I want it to be on the opposite side. So 3.5F. And now I'm going to change it to target position also. And now we can... Make sure everything's working. But before we do that, we need to add one more thing. So it's called the decision requester. You can find that by having nothing in your search bar and clicking the ML agents option right here. And then you can find decision requester right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. And I'm going to leave out all the default settings right there. And I'm going to change the inference type to heuristic, actually. Not inference type, the behavior type to heuristic only. And that means I'm going to be able to control it. But before we do that, we need to add one more function. That's going to be public override void heuristic. Now what I need to do is I need to write. So this right here actually is going to allow me to basically um, do call, not this, not call it. I'm going to be making the decisions of what the AI could do by using the heuristic. But anyways, so segment is going to be a float segment. Continuous actions. Let's just call it action segments for now. Equals actions out dot continuous actions. Okay. So. I'm basically cloning the variable right there. And now I'm going to say continuous actions at index zero. Is going to equal input dot get get access raw then I'm just gonna copy the name because I always forget how to spell horizontal and then I can change the other one to vertical and index one just like this now what it's gonna do is whenever I press the A and D it's going to move it side to side whenever I press W and S it's gonna move up and down. So now if I go here, let it save. I can now press play. And I should be able to play as the agent here. Now I messed up something or another because I don't want them to be negative for the agent. I want it to be positive, positive, just like that. Okay. I hit a wall, it resets. If I don't hit a wall, I can go find the object, that, the target I need to move to. And bam. So now everything's working. But we need the AI to do it now. So to do that, I'm going to change it from heuristic only to default. And now open up the command prompt one more time. Actually, first of all, I'm going to make it so it's easier to see if it, if I succeeded or if I failed. So I'm going to duplicate my target thing and I'm going to make a sprite render, a sprite render component, sprite, sprite render, and I'm going to call this background, which is one word, background, sprite, sprite render. I'm going to set this in the inspector, but whenever I succeed, I'm going to set it to dot color equal to green. And whenever I fail, I'm going to set it to red. Just like that.
I'm gonna test it one more time. See if it works. And I got an error because I did not sign it. And there we go. We can now see if it failed or succeeded. So now I'm going to go into my command prompt here. So I'm going to open up File Explorer to my packet, to my place, whatever. Press CMD. Now I'm going to activate the scripts folder again. So VENV slash scripts slash activate. Activate. Just like that. Now it's activated. So now I'm going to write ML agent dash learn dash dash run dash ID equals test one. Just like this. And so what this is going to do, it's going to it's going to make the ML agents thing, and it's going to it's going to call the ML agents learn thing, and it's going to run it at an ID of one test one, so we can have different IDs and we can see our progress. So now I'm just going to click enter here and wait for it to load. And you see this awesome Unity logo, and here it says start training by pressing play button in the editor. And we can see one agent train. It's going to be decently fast because it speeds up the training process. But the agent is going to take forever to learn here, just like this. So I'm going to stop it. Now I'm going to go back to my command prompt and see it didn't stop by itself. Normally, it should stop all by itself, but for some odd reason, it's not. So to manually stop it, all you need to press is Control and C at the same time, and we got this error. We got this error. Because we need to install um, a, a O and an X package. Now this is supposed to come installed by default, but it's not for some reason. So hopefully, if you guys hopefully you guys don't have this error, but for me, I got this error. This error. So I'm gonna go ahead and write pip install O and then X, just like that. Okay, now that's finished installing. I'm going to go ahead and run the ML agents one more time. So ML. Actually, I'm not gonna run it yet because we need to have more than one environment. I'm going to show you guys the environment. So I'm going to duplicate the, not, I'm not going to duplicate it. First I'm going to make a new prefab. So if I need to make changes, I can make it to all of them at once. Very easily. So I'm going to duplicate this one. Move it up here. Then I'm going to duplicate both of these. Move it to the right a little bit. I'm going to duplicate it one more time. Move it to the right again. Yep, that was a little bit too much. Go right here, and then I'm going to duplicate these ones right here and I'm going to move them up here now so I have nine training environments and now I want to make it so I can see them all so I'm going to move this over to like so I'm like 30 by 30 and zoom out by using the orthographic size and 30 by 30 looks like it was too much so I'm going to go 15 by 15 then and I'm going to zoom out to something about 25 so I can see them all train at once and now I'm going to write ML agents dash learn dash dash run dash ID equals test two. I'm going to press enter now and wait for it to start. So it says now press play. And oh, they all go right there because I forgot to use local position. My bad. So here, where I can do click observations. Instead of having position, I want this to be a local position. On here, on the collect observations, and over here. And now it should work. So this is this that was just a perfect example on why you should not use transform dot position. You should always use local position for ML agents training. Oh, a couple of them got it, got it early. So now they're going to start learning faster. So I'm going to stop the training here. And here it's not going to stop this, but it's going to continue as soon as I press play, which is going to be good for this example. I'm going to go into my code here, move to agent, move target to agent. I'm going to switch these around. So now it's transform, it's not target. So now basically going in opposite directions. So now instead of the agent having to go to the right to get the target, it has to go to the left. And it's going to be confused. If you look at it, oh, it's not going to be confused. Well, normally it gets confused. So I'm going to stop this. 
training here. Press control. Oh. Did it automatically stop it? Oh, it automatically stopped it this time. Okay, so I'm going to go to my folders here. And to get your result, you need to go to the results folder right here. And you see test one, test two. So I'm going to go ahead and go to test two. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it in here. There's also an error with the current Unity version that I'm using that that won't work. So I'm going to open up a new tab. Copy this path here. I'm going to paste it right here. Click enter. Go to Unity. Not Unity. I'm going to go to my ML Agents package. Go to Assets. And now I have to go here. Copy the ML Agents thing. Paste it right here. And now if I go back in here, we see our brain. So I'm going to go ahead and go here. Go to my ML Agent. And drag and drop the brain. And we can see the ML Agent and what it's learned. Now we see some of them are still getting red. But some of them are also getting green. Awesome. And this is not learning right now. This is from what it has learned. But then if I go back into my script here, and I go ahead and change this back to transform.position, and this back to target position, I can see that the ML agents most likely won't work. I know it does work because I trained on both. But it works better on this one because it was trained more on this one. But to get it so it's actually trained on everything, like so we're just automatically do it. We need to do this one easy thing in my opinion. It's really easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this and name it ENV instead of target for environment. I'm gonna go ahead and here, paste this env dot rotation is going to equal a new, no, not new, it's just going to equal quaternion dot Euler zero, zero, zero. But I'm actually going to put random math f, not math f, just random dot range. I'm just on the z. I'm going to make it go from zero to 365 degrees. 365. No, not 365, just 360 degrees. So it's going to be rotated randomly, but then also if we're using trends from the local position, it's not going to, he's, it's going to be the same exact thing. So that's why I'm going to go transform that rotation for here equals quaternion dot identity. Now I know I've been telling you guys use local position for everything. Use local, but for this, you don't want to use local. This is a single thing that you don't want to use local for, because if you use local position, then it's not going to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a new learn anything on this for this. So to do that, I'm gonna write ML agents dash learn dash dash run dash ID equals test three. Okay, it says it's ready to start training. I'm gonna press play now. Oh, and the error I'm getting here is because I have not assigned the environment to my agent. So I'm going to save it, and we see it automatically stopped this time. I'm pretty happy. I have no clue what I did, but it just automatically stopped now. Anyways, I'm going to now write ML agents dash learn learn dash dash run dash id equals test three. Now this will give me an error if I just go with it right now. Because test 3 is already a thing. It's already created, but it has no result, so it's useless. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this folder. And then it never knows that test 3 was ever ran before. So, I'm going to go right here to start the training. So we see it's at a random rotation. And so now the AI will learn to always just go to the position that it's told to go to. Now I'm just going to leave it training for a little bit, and I'll show you guys the final result. Okay guys, now you guys can see, uh, if you leave it running for long enough, you can see it analyzing the, um, how the AIs did. And then it shows also how good the AI is, the mean reward. That, in my opinion, is the most useful thing to look at. You can see last time, I got 3.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.
it still sometimes messes up. So you see that the one after that, I had 9.994, which is three less than 0 0.003 less than the last one. So that means the AI messed up two times. Two of the AIs messed up. Now this time, you can see I got 10, which means all the AIs the whole time always got it. They never messed up. Now for you, depending on what your reward is, the mean reward is going to be different for you. Since 10 was the max was the max reward, I got 10. So you see the training automatically stopped here. So I'm going to go ahead and just full screen Unity again and dock my game view back here. And then I'm going to open up File Explorer, go into my test three. Now I see my move to target ONNX file. I'm going to go and delete the old one with it and its meta file because we don't need those anymore. I'm going to paste my new ONNX file in here and make sure the agent has it assigned. So the agent does have it assigned. So I'm going to go back out into my scene, disable all of these guys so there's only one left. Move the camera. That's not it. Move the main camera to position zero, 00. Change the size to something like 5 or 7. And I'm going to press play. And now we can see the AI, what it has learned. It just knows immediately to move to the target. So if you guys have any questions, you guys can just leave it in the comments. Um, if you guys have any suggestions on videos, leave them in the comments so I can figure out what you guys want me to make. And yeah, like the video, you guys found it helpful so this can help more people out because there's not very many new tutorials on how to use ML agents. I'll see you guys later.